Hi everyone, good morning and good evening. I'm Josephine from Fulbright Taiwan Taipei office. It's good to see you online. Before we start the sessions, I would like to invite our um, executive director, Rendo Nadal, to give us an opening remark. Dr. Nadal. Okay, thank you, Josephine. Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to meet you and congratulations on your selection uh, to uh, come and be an English teaching assistant in Taiwan. We're very excited about the new cohort. We're excited to greet you and to start the process of matching you to your placements. Um, this is a very unique opportunity for you. And as you think about your choices, and you will have many choices, I'm sure, over the next few months, uh, we hope that you will choose to to come to Taiwan, and we expect that will be your first choice. Uh, if you get a job offer, you'll be working for the rest of your life. Uh, grad school can wait. Uh, take advantage of this really fantastic opportunity. You won't regret it. Uh, the other thing that you'll think about in the coming days is about where you're going to be placed in Taiwan. And uh -huh. we're going to be introducing you to the process for that matching process tonight. Um, but what I would like to say is that ultimately it's really not as important as you think it is because you will come to love and appreciate uh, the place that you that you are. So come into this with some flexibility and openness and expect yourself to, to really fall in love with your school, with your community, uh, with the county. Was I muted that entire time? No, okay, I'm back on now. Uh, so we look forward to welcoming you, to introducing you to this process. And uh, again, congratulations on your selection. Look forward to seeing you in August. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Nadal. Okay, let me introduce our program director, Kelly Zhang. Kelly. Hello, everyone. Welcome to joining the session. Congratulations for receiving this award. And um, I'm delighted to greet you all today and introduce our uh, capable team, uh, our um, staff to you. And more importantly is that um, I may invite you to get a pen, a paper, take some notes, but if you cannot concentrate or you are able to join this session, that's fine, we record it so you can uh, relearn the content later. So don't be panic. I hope you will have an enjoyable session today. And uh, um, don't try to remember the face of our staff or their names. They are too many, but um, they all have a very bright smile and they are kind people. So um, first of all, I would like to um, introduce you that the process today, we are not going to open for question and answer session because there are too many of them. So we create a system. Uh, can we go on to the next page? Yes. Uh, so if you have any questions today, uh, you can scan this QR code and uh, we will be answering them pretty soon. And uh, we will update the new answers on our website for the FAQs periodically every Wednesday. So uh, we will collect all of your questions and then post the answers on our website. All right, so today we will have um, some presentation about the site introduction and also uh, some information shared by our current grantees. So for this, a uh, slide I'd like to introduce to you our um, support team uh, in the Taipei office. But beside the office members, we also have our uh, staff who are stationed in the 
um, local companies. So may all our staff wave your hands. Yeah, so um, we have, um, you just met Dr. Nadeau and myself, and uh, we also have Kevin. Kevin is the um, lead advisor for the uh, TEPO and the EMI support professionalist. And we also have a project manager, Ariel, and uh, um, also Fonda, the regional manager, and the EMI manager, Sonia. And today our host is Josephine. Yeah, thank you, Josephine. And uh, also uh, Chris, I think many people receive um, Chris and uh, um, other uh, staff's um, emails. And we also have Yuting, our program um, assistance specialist. Okay, so uh, don't try to remember their names. Uh, <laughs> you just remember what we said today. Okay, next page. Uh, so this is our 20th year for uh, the English language teaching program in Taiwan. And uh, now we have uh, currently 14 sites. And you can see all the uh, place mark with the, the red pin. Those are the current sites. And we are going to have two more new sites which are uh, Jiayi County and the Tainan City. So you may find that we don't have so much information about those two sites, but um, they have a very um, friendly um, setting in the schools and also with the government support. And you will pay more attention later on if you are interested in those two new counties. Next question, yes. Okay, I will pass on uh, to Josephine. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you, Dr. Nadal. Okay, as you can see, this is the brief timeline. Today is April 12, 2024, and we are having the informative session right now. After the session, supporting will send out the placement survey to you today. Then you will have to fill out the survey and complete the survey before the deadline. In May, we will send you the grant packet, and you will be you will know where you are located in here. And then you have to sign the grant packet document and reply to us. After we receive your signature paper, Ms. Charlie will provide more information to you later. Then you can start to prepare the document for visa application and make a doctor's appointment for health check. Once you get a visa, then you need to purchase you will need to purchase the flight ticket from us. Do not purchase the flight ticket on your own. In July, you need to start the pack. And we will hold another pre-departure orientation. And grantee training will start on August 1st. And the summer training is mandatory. So we expect grantee to arrive in Taiwan on August 1st to join all the training and the join site orientation. But right now, you don't have to worry about the visa, the flight, the summer training. You need to worry about the placement. This is the purpose for the informative session today. So after the informative session today, you will receive an email with this link. This link will ask you the basic information and ask you if you will accept the grants or not. If you click yes, then you will find the instruction here with some important notes for you. You can see this four aspects. The first one is location and schools preference. In this session, the survey will ask you location, school size, and the preference of how you like to commute to school by bus, carpool by local teacher, or scooter. And the site preference, we have 16 sites in total, but Taipei is not an option. So you can only list other 15 sites from number one to number 15. Please remember, the lower number is the highest preference. That means number one is your favorite. For example, I like Jingmen. At least Jingmen is my number one, my top choice. Okay? 
And we will also ask you education background if you have TESOL, TEFL, teacher, teaching certificate and teaching experience here. So there's a lot of questions you need to answer in the survey. So please take some time to fill the survey. If you are not able to finish the survey in one day, it's okay. Then we will receive, um, just leave the page on and when you log in your account, the system will give you answers. When you complete the survey, please remember to click submit so that we will receive your preference and your reply through the survey. We also have grantee forgot to click submit and we don't know where they want to go. Okay, so remember, click submit is very important. After you click the submit, you will receive a sister email from Google. They will send you a copy of your answers. So if you do not receive a copy of the answers, that might mean you didn't click the submit. It's important. Okay, some of the facts. I know some of you already check why it's Taiwan and you probably want to go some certain site, but there's some fact for you to know. Okay, Pindong. Ping, there's a, a very famous uh, tourist area in Pindong. It's called Kanding. Um, but if you want to go to Pindong, please note that you have to ride a scooter because the because Pindong considered one of the country with a long landscape and everything could be far away. About the Taichung, Taichung is easy to uh, travel to the north and easy to travel to the south. But if you choose Taichung as your number one, um, Taichung is back ranking to teach and create lesson plan independently. And I know Taichung have a lot of extra work you need to do. So New Taipei City. If you are a person who loves the small class and the remote area, you will fall in love with New Taipei City. But New Taipei City is not Taipei City, it's different. Um, New Taipei City is a road can be mountains and you will need to travel to school by bus or a couple with local teacher, our LET. Okay, sat in tour. We are so happy to have our current grantee today. We have, let's welcome Anna, Karina, Matt, and Nasha. They are located in four different countries and uh, each of them will use five minutes to share their site specialty. So I will pass the microphone to Anna. Anna is from Yunlin. Anna! Hello, everybody. Thank you guys for joining. So my name is Anna, and I am in my second year in Taiwan. And I chose to live in Yunlin for both of those years. So if you can't tell, it's my favorite place. It's like my second home. And I'm just so excited to have the chance to introduce it to you. So. Firstly, where is Yunlin? So Yunlin is on the west coast of Taiwan, and we have our own high-speed railway station, as well as multiple train stations to make it really convenient, super easy to travel anywhere in Taiwan from Yunlin. So the big question, right? Like, why should you choose Yunlin? To me, I feel like Yunlin really is the best of both worlds. You get city and nature, right? So I included some pictures of our big cities. But we also have access to the ocean, right, which is super cool, and the mountains all in one. So there's beautiful hiking trails in Gukong, easy to access sea coastlines, as well as I included this picture, very Instagrammable swings over the ocean, if you want to take some pics. And then we have, yeah, big cities um, with really good transportation. So if you move to Yunlin, you would be living in either Huei or Dolio, which are circled on the map. And these are very convenient university towns. So there's a lot of young people and a lot of cultural diversity. Like even in my apartment, we have foreigners, not only from the US, but also Indonesia, Russia, Germany, Singapore. You know, there's just so much diversity and so many chances to interact with people from all walks of life. So yeah, next slide, please. <clears throat> so I included some of my favorite parts of Yunlin. It's hard to wrap it all up in a couple slides, but I will say the biggest thing about Yunlin that stood out to me when I first moved here is the history. It used to be part of the original capital of Taiwan, which was Tainan. So it's preserved its history really well. So firstly, I will say we have a strong Japanese era influence. 
So I included some pictures of our old streets. These are actually original historical buildings from over a hundred years ago that have been maintained. And we also have one of the last standing preserved Japanese military villages, as well as old Japanese dormitories. So these are open to the public. You can go visit them. They're cultural centers with tours, gift shops, cute coffee spots, like little treats you can eat. Um, and those are in Hue and Dolio, both of the cities that you would be living in if you choose Yunlin. And then also we have very historical religious sites that I find to be super cool. So we have two temples that are from the 1700s. We have the Beigang uh, Chanting Temple, as well as the Shilo Fuxing Temple. Um, Beigang is a very special city in Yunlin. Um, this temple is one of the most important Matsu temples in Taiwan, and they have a huge parade each year um, where they have people standing on cars, like throwing candy, throwing cookies, like all sorts of treats, and you can go witness it. So that's a really cool cultural event. And then, yeah, Taiwan puppeteering. I had no idea, but Yunlin is, at, when I first moved, I had no clue, but Yunlin is home of Taiwan's original puppeteering. So they have outdoor performances with live bands sometimes. They have performing artists that come from all over the world, like Japan, the US, everywhere. Every single year they have an international festival for puppeteering, that's really cool. And then finally, Good Eats. I swear Yunlin has some of the best food in all of Taiwan. And I credit it to the fact that Yunlin is the agricultural heart of Taiwan, right? This is where most of the farms are. So like mochi, for example, mochi is made from like the glutinous rice. The rice comes from the field that's like literally one kilometer away from the store you're buying it from, which is so unique and so cool. Also in Gukang, the mountains, there's a ton of coffee plantations. So there's super fresh, delicious coffee. Um, and even in the mountains, the last picture I included of the girl, there's a really cool restaurant that overlooks the entire like sunset and you can get a foot bath. You can have fresh coffee from Gukang and hot pot. So I just love all the food and also my, my like LETs, my co-teachers, they often like their families have farms as well. So they'll just bring me like bags of pomelos, like onions. So my apartment with all my other ETAs is just like filled with different farm products that we can eat, which is very cool. All right, next slide, please. Yeah, so here's some pictures of our ETAs, ETFs over the years. We do so many cultural events, y'all. Like we've done it all. We've gone to the mountains, to the ocean. Um, we went in the mountains. We did fresh orange picking. We did um, a coastline cleanup on the ocean. We also did sweet potato festivals together. We handmade paper from flowers, which I didn't even know you could do, but it, that was super fun. We also got a chance to go into those Japanese military villages underground and look at the air raid centers. So just really interacting with local history and local culture. And I think the most important thing about Yunlin is that the locals are so very friendly. Like they will go out of their way to help you if you're lost. They're constantly greeting you with a smile, giving you snacks if you go to the restaurants. Like it is just the most friendly county to me. Next slide, please. Yeah, so finally, you know what I'm going to say. Yunlin is number one. Um, I knew a little bit of Chinese before I came, but you don't need to know Chinese to move to Yunlin. I think people will really meet you wherever you're at. However, if you are really interested in languages, Yunlin is a good county not only to learn Chinese, but also Taiwanese. There's a lot of local pride for Taiwan and Yunlin. Even my students at school will be like, teacher, let me teach you Taiwanese. So you're going to get so much access to uh, linguistic and cultural diversity in Yunlin. And like I said, it's a really convenient county. I really hope y'all um, consider it. I hope you guys come to Yunlin next year. Thank you so much for listening. Um, I will drop my email in chat if that's okay. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. So next will be Safari. Karina, are you here, Karina? Yes, hello everyone. My name's Karina and I'm here to introduce Southern Hualien. So about me, I'm a first year ETA here in Southern Hualien. Next slide. So Southern Hualien is still a part of Hualien County, which is on the east side of Taiwan. Hualien cohort will be more northbound by Hualien City, but Southern Hualien is in Yuli Township. And there's so many reasons why I love Southern Hualien, but I decided to introduce Southern Hualien to you guys today by naming my three favorite things about my site. So number one, small town creates an environment really easy 
to make lifelong friends. Number two, significant cultural immersion in Southern Hualien. And number three, very, very, very convenient access to many outdoor activities. Let's get started. Next slide. So number one, small town, really easy to make friends. I see this as like a two-pronged approach. Part one, A, subcategory A, is that Southern Hualien is a really small cohort. Right now, 2023, 2024, we have just six ETAs and ETFs in Southern Hualien. That is the smallest cohort in all of Fulbright right now. So this really gives you an opportunity to get close and make friends with the Fulbrighters that you're with because you're in this small town physically close to each other and that creates a really convenient environment for the lifelong friends. But then subcategory B of part one is that a remote town really creates a place where you can connect with local community members. So when I first got to Southern Hualien, my initial connections were with schools. So that was my coworkers first on a professional setting. And that sort of developed into a more personal relationship to where we get dinner now, we go on day trips, we go on weekend trips together. And even this year for the Lunar New Year holiday, I traveled internationally with a group from my school. So these people are really interested about you, your background, American culture, practicing English with you, but just as interested as sharing with you their culture, Taiwan, and their life in Southern Hualien. And even I found that from my personal experience at school, those relationships really helped me branch out and meet more people within the Yuli town. For example, the swim coach in my school knew that I like to dance, and she invited me to go to a Zumba dance class with her. And now every Friday, me and the swim teacher, we go to Zumba class together. And this is the picture of me in the top corner of me with my Zumba dance teacher and other people from school. So this place is small, but the, 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 the few people that do live here really are interested in developing those deep connections with you. So even if it's a small town, you get to know people really well. Okay, next slide. Number two, significant cultural immersion. I teach at Yuli Guoshao, which is one of the largest schools in Southern Hualien. And that has, I teach 290 students. So the school size really ranges here from me being 300 to 60 to 50, to even one as small as 16 students in the whole school, first through sixth grade. So this gives you the ability to know your students really well. And you know your students on a personal connection too, and they can share with you their background, their culture in a more significant and deeper way. In Southern Hualien, we also have an Amis market and Amis people are indigenous to Taiwan. And every weekend we're able to go shop around, hang out, grab tea, and we even dance to clean up, to motivate everyone in the community to clean up the space. We do a little dance beforehand, and this is the, the Amis dance teacher leading us all in a cleanup dance. And then lastly, the in Southern Hualien, the most impactful experience that I've had is volunteering with Suji in Yuli Town. So Sichi started in Hualien and in Southern Hualien, we have a recycling center. And this is where people donate recycling and then Sichi needs volunteers to help sort the recycling into metal, plastic, paper. So maybe every other Saturday, me and the other cohort, mem my other cohort members go to Sichi and we help sort recycling. And then they treat us to a vegetarian me meal because they're a Buddhist organization, they're vegetarian. We then then have a we then have a meal together and so this kind of brings an element even in addition to everything that I've talked about because you start to form those connections with even people who might share the same culture as you or you're able to experience something completely different okay number three next slide Convenient access to many outdoor activities. Something I'm really proud of of Southern Hualien is that all six of us hundred percent passing rate of the scooter exam. And that is all thanks to our coordinator. Yes, thank you. All thanks to our coordinator who, when we first arrived in August, we practiced every day for three weeks straight practicing this for the scooter exam and all of us passed on the first try. So I know you can do it and it's so great and convenient having a scooter here in Southern Hualien. 
but we are just a 50 minute train ride from Hualien City. So this gives us access to Taroko National Park easy on a day trip. Last, in addition, we have in Yuli Town direct access to Yushan National Park and the famous Walami Trail. This is me with my fellow cohort members with actually Graham from Suji, he speaks English and leads the Suji Organization for Recycling, offered to take us on a hike to Walami Trail one day. And then lastly, we have great hot springs in Yuli. So this is me and some people from work and some cohort members enjoying some hot springs after work one day. Okay, next slide. Right, so that is all the reasons why I love Southern Hualien. First, lifelong friends. Second, significant cultural immersion. And third, great outdoor activities. I love Southern Hualien and I'm confident you will too. My email's on the screen. If you wanna ask any questions, I'm here to help. And I'll pass it on to Matt. Thank you, Karina. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Matt. I'm a first year Peng Hu ETA. I feel that I'm sort of in the impossible position of going after Karina, who is like the most positive person I've ever encountered in my entire life. And I find myself kind of wishing that I was in Yuli Township, but not fully because Peng Hu is really the place to be. Um, and I'd love to tell you a little bit more about it. Uh, so next slide, please. Uh, so why Peng Hu? If you're like me before hearing this presentation when I was in your spot a year ago, I had never heard of Penghu. I did not know what that place was, couldn't have found it on a map. And now it is the most important place in the world to me. And so you'll see on this map, Penghu is an archipelago off the west coast of Taiwan. We're in the heart of the Taiwan Strait. Um, and you'll see that Ma Gong here on the map is the capital of Penghu County. And that is where all of us ETAs and ETFs live. But the question you have is why should I choose Penghu? What makes this place so amazing? And I've broken it down similarly to Karina uh, into three distinct categories. Those are the environment, immersion, and community. And these are, will go in ascending order of importance, I feel. So we'll go to the next slide and we'll start with the environment. Also a quick note, I am at school and I think the bell is about to go off. So if that happens, I do apologize. But as you can see from these pictures, Penghu is stunningly beautiful. The ocean is everywhere, but the beaches are amazing. Like nowhere I've ever been. I used to go to school in California. Penghu makes California look like nothing. I, I don't even remember Los Angeles beaches, but the environment in Penghu is really unique. We have warm summers and cold, windy winters. And what this means is that year round, Penghu is a really interesting place to live. In the summer, we have so many opportunities to go to the beach, so many different beaches to choose from. And in the winter, we get a lot of opportunities to explore some of the more city aspects, more cultural aspects of Penghu that maybe aren't as can, maybe you don't want to sit out at the beach when it's uh, January. Interesting about Penghu is that in Penghu, you are never more than a 15 minute scooter ride from the beach. So no matter where you are, no matter where you teach, where you live, you can always find a beach in close proximity. And that makes August and September and October really sort of a dream come true in Penghu. Next slide. Um, great, thank you. So immersion, um, Penghu, because we are an island distinct from the main island of Taiwan, Penghu has a really unique um, local identity and some really strong traditions that you don't find anywhere else in Taiwan. This picture in the bottom left is a turtle that was put up made out of bags of rice and flour during the Lantern Festival this year. And so the temples really put on these huge displays for turtles during Lantern Festival because the turtles are so important in Penghu. They represent the ocean and longevity and so much for the people who really rely on the sea here. Um, up in the top right, that's me frying some peanuts in a local village called Nanliao. Uh, we did this as a cultural immersion event with the whole cohort, which was really fun. And this is one of the villages that is very well preserved, has some of the traditional Penghu architecture. Um, down in the bottom center is also one of these historical villages called Urkan, which has this beautiful Penghu architecture and all of these tiles that are traditionally adorning Penghu houses and residences. And they've sort of kept this village very well preserved and it has a lot of local shops and things to eat. What I'll say is that Penghu is relatively isolated. And so, you know, there's no HSR, there's no train even. Um, but this isolation can be challenging at times, but I think it also makes for a really rewarding experience. Like I feel that I know this place very well because 
you know, it's only this, it's only so big and there's only so many of us here. So I think you will be immersed in Peng Hu. If you know Chinese, you will definitely be using it. And if you don't know Chinese, you will very quickly pick some up because it's like, that is the way that we get around here in Peng Hu. So I think that, I think of that as a huge benefit to Peng Hu. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so finally, I think the most important thing about Peng Hu and the thing that makes it so special to me is the community aspect of it. And sort of like Karina said, we have this strong cohort community and also this really strong local community that really complement each other. Peng Hu's small size and close-knit population means that we, we make local connections wherever we go. We are always getting invited to things, meeting people who introduce us to other friends. Um, and the entire Fulbright cohort in Peng Hu lives in Magong City. I am a five minute scooter ride from the furthest apartment away from me, which means that, you know, it's very easy to see other Fulbrighters. You will feel so connected to your cohort here because you live so close. Um, some of these photos show us at a music festival that goes on in Peng Hu in the fall. Um, I was invited by one of my local teachers uh, to participate in a 5k in a town on the Western Island. And that's the photo on the bottom left. And then the bottom middle right there is uh, a lot of our cohort members just on an average day at the beach in Peng Hu, um, enjoying this wonderful island. So the community aspect here is so strong. I feel so connected to my cohort members and my school has really welcomed me in a way that uh, I've never experienced in a place uh, before. So I really think the community in Peng Hu is, is the selling point here. Next slide, please. So all of this is to say, why should you choose Peng Hu? I think hopefully it's obvious, but if you need a too long didn't read blurb. I think Penghu is the perfect site for grantees wanting a unique experience in Taiwan and one that will really push them to and let them grow in new and exciting ways. I think you will be pushed out of your comfort zone here, but I think Fulbright is the time to go for that kind of experience. Or maybe you just want to go to the beach and both of that you will find in Penghu. Hopefully, like me, you are a little bit of both of these. Um, but either way, you will love Peng Hu uh, if you have either of these sort of inklings inside of you. Next slide, please. And finally, I will uh, also extend my email to you and offer any sort of advice or questions and answers to anyone. Uh, if you have any questions about Peng Hu, about my life here, I'd be happy to answer them um, over email or any other way. So I'll drop my email in the chat as well. Uh, and I'll pass it off to Naja and Kidman. Hello, everyone. I'm so excited to be here with you today. Um, first off, shout out to my fellow um, grantees. Wow, you guys, as I'm thinking about my second year, like I'm, I've been sold. I want to come and visit all of you. And I feel like all of the sites are amazing. Um, I feel like similarly to them, I cannot overstate my love for Taiwan. Um, as I'm thinking about staying here again for another year, I, I encourage you, all of you um, grantees that are on the call to really, really consider um, accepting your grant, coming to Taiwan, and just really experiencing this place for the next year. I am here to talk about Kinmen, the Golden Gate. I'm so excited. Okay, next slide. So Kinmen is a, the most unique site um, out of all the sites on Taiwan because I feel like we are an island off of mainland similar to Peng Hu, but we are very, very close to mainland China. You can see mainland China from many parts of our island. Um, sometimes you can see it from the coast. Some people can see it from their apartments. Um, it really just depends on where you are. You are very, very close to mainland China. Um, this is Kinmen, and this right here over here in this corner is Xiamen. Um, Kinmen is a direct view into cross-strait relations. It's the island that captures your heart. And um, I honestly think for so many people who come here, you don't imagine loving Kinmen. Um, you're like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna be so far. I'm off of mainland Taiwan. And then this island just really grows and captures your heart and, and makes you have such a unique experience. Next slide, please. So these are some things about Kinmen. Number one, we have a small community, of course, being um, a smaller island, um, and that fosters creating lifelong friendships and connections. Similar to Karina and Matt both said, uh, 
Kimmin is one of the bigger sites. We have about 16 grantees. So the community aspect of the cohort plus the local um, community is a really, um, really rewarding part of being in Kimmin, like being able to interact with local Kimmenese people, Taiwanese people. We even meet people from mainland China as well, plus the cohort. Like you really get an opportunity to, to experience so many different relationships. Um, the second one, you get a unique cultural immersion opportunities, rich intersection of history and tradition. Um, so many things historically that I did not know about um, Taiwan and Kimmin. I have learned so much here. There's so many museums, so many ways for you to learn about the local military history um, and just other like local Kimmin traditions, local Kinmen history. It's so amazing to be kind of in this like time capsule. Um, of Taiwan and China relations. Number three is very community centered. We have lots of community service projects. Um, we also have the host family program and we get to do like English camp in partnership with the local Kinmen government. And these are just some pictures um, from Kinmen. Next slide, please. Okay, so Kinmen, we have um, beaches, not as beautiful as Pungku beaches, I must admit. Matt, you get all of your credit. <laughs> Not as beautiful as Pungu beaches, but we still have some amazing beaches. We have nature, we have outdoor activities. Um, we have like Taiwu Mountain for my hiker people. We have so many hiking trails. Um, we have many beaches that where you can visibly see the military history. We have beaches with tanks and spikes and all types of cool things. We also have the Kimmin Marathon where people from all over Taiwan come to Kimmin to run. And then we have year round festivals. Kimmin loves their festivals. We have the Kite Festival, Lantern Festival, Taro, which if you know, you know, Taiwan loves their Taro and Kimmin um, is a big um, importer of Taro, exporter of Taro. So we have the big, huge Taro Festival where ETAs go and dig Taro. And we just have so many opportunities to really get yourself involved um, with local culture. And I put a couple of pictures of like the Pomelo because we have Mid-Autumn Festival, Taro, Lantern Festival. We have, most of our celebrations have um, wind lion, lion dancers, which is a very traditional thing. So I put the lion dancers up here. Of course, amazing food. We're home of the otters. When you come to Kimmin, you will see all the otter mascots, otter shirts, otters, and when lions are like our mascots. And then of course, lucky money for a lunar festival. Um, next slide, please. So Kinmen, why Kinmen? I know a lot of people are like, Kinmen is so far from the mainland, but here is what our local ETAs have to say about Kinmen. Kinmen, a home filled with warm hearted people, a small island with endless exploration, an unforgettable experience, an island rich with history and unlike anywhere else on this earth, retweet. A unique place to learn history, experience culture, connect with locals, enjoy traditional food and see many interesting, cool, fun and beautiful sites. Many adventures and peaceful weekends, small island brimming with big adventures and opportunities, historic island with a tight knit community, Kimmin isn't where I ever would have imagined myself living for a year, but the uniqueness of this island, life and the local community have made it such a special place. And I truly mean special. I wouldn't want to be anywhere else this year. Living in Kimmin is more than a lifestyle. It's a daily adventure. And that is so true. I feel like that about Taiwan in general, Taiwan, living in Taiwan is more than a lifestyle. It's a daily adventure. And truly, you can't go wrong with any of the posts that have been presented today or that are on the list. Um, teaching at Kimmin is an experience where every day brings fun new lessons and wonderful connections. I truly hope you consider um, becoming a part of the Kimmin community and, and ranking Kimmin as one of your places that you would like to be. Um, I truly, 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 truly cannot overstate the opportunities, the fun, the love for the community and just the overall culture that you get to experience being here. I love Kinmen, I love Taiwan, and I hope you will 
come to Kenman. Also, I forgot to say, I started with no Mandarin. So if you have no Chinese, you can certainly come to Kenman and learn and take classes at the local college here, which is what I do. Um, but you can survive in Kenman with little Mandarin. But also if um, the Kenman locals love speaking to ETAs in Mandarin. So if you come here and you really want to improve your Mandarin, this is definitely a place where you can come. Um, so thank you so much for tuning into our presentation. And I now pass it back to Josephine. Thank you, Nasha, Matt, Karina, and Anna sharing. The information that provides is very helpful. And a big thank you to you all. Okay. Before we move into the next session, I would like to also add on if you are placed in Kimen, Penghu, Bindong, and South Hualien, a grantee will have uh, additional transportation allowance. And this money will transfer to your bank account by May 2025. Okay, resource. Uh, before we collect all the current gratis question when they come. Uh, right now, we're going to share this QA to you. Uh, we believe you have tons of questions you want to ask, but before you ask, we strongly suggest you to check the frequently asked question and click the each icon and you might find the answers there. So let me just show the page. For example, this is the, the, our website. So you might want to ask why Taipei is not including the country ranking. So you will find the answers here. So especially before you fill the placement survey, we would like to ask you to look into the quick review. You will see a map of Taiwan. And when you click into the page, you will see different area. So when you click North Taiwan, you will see, oh, New Taipei, Taipei, Taichung, Ilan, and Hualien. You will see, oh, Taichung in Taipei, the workload mark as high, then you might, if you, you can take this into your consideration and you can also take a, into look at school size, small or large or medium. Okay, so you may scan the QR code to find the website. Okay, so there's a lot of sites that we didn't mention in this introduction um, informative session, but you can also look into this website. You will see the new site, Jai City and Tainan here. So these are two sites are brand new. So you may also scan the QR code to have more information and know the weather, the population by the site. Also, we have the YouTube channel. You may um, click this video to see the former grantees life experience and teaching experience in Taiwan. We also have the Facebook. The Facebook shows the year round grantees lives here. So like, for example, uh, we have a winter camp, we have the remote service, and we also have the cover train bed for grantees to join with us. Uh, thank you for other current graduates who is in school teaching right now to provide their contact information. If you are looking for some suggestion from grantee, please contact them. Okay. So if you are first time travel abroad or first time uh, live overseas, um, you can check this website. This website have a very good introduction of Taiwan. So you will know about our country better before you come. So let's remind you, the grant will start on August 1st, 2024, and the grant will end on June 30, 2025. And we request all grantees to arrive on August 1st to join the summer training, join site orientation. And also, if you are located in the site that required to ride a scooter, you have to pass and get the scooter's license in one month. Mission is possible, okay? So take away, before you fill the placement survey, make sure you look into the highlight of each site. Before you ask the question, please take a look into all the um, frequently asked questions. You might find the answers later. Um, just like and subscribe our YouTube channel. You may find some video from the former grantees and also follow us on Facebook. You will see our activity. And big thank you again to Anna, Karina, Matt, and Nasha's today sharing it's a real we are so grateful to have 
them and also Grantee who provide the email to us for your reference. They are very generous. Okay, final remind. Um, for ETF, the placement survey will close by April 19. For ETA, your placement survey will be closed by April 26. It's all time, one time. So you have to calculate the time different on your own. So before you fail the placement, please hope, I hope you can take a look into all the resources that we prepare for you today. Again, if you cannot find the answers from frequently asked questions, it's okay. Scan the QR code, leave your name and email, and let us know your question. Then we will update your question on the website page. This page. Okay. So before we end the session, does the supporting or Kelly, do you want to add something before we end the session? Uh, thank you, Josephine, for the wonderful session. Uh, the team put a lot of efforts uh, to preparing this. And so I'd like to uh, thank you, the team, and the, all the presenters from our site. And a quick reminder, if you um, wanted to add your survey who already submitted, you can just entered it again by using your password and you can revise it. See how smart the system is because we know you will change your mind from time to time. So before the deadline, you can always go back and fix your survey answers. All right, so thank you so much. If you have any questions, uh, follow the instruction and uh, revisit the recording uh, we will share with you and also revisit this uh, PowerPoint. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Okay, the session ends today. Bye. Thank have you. a good night. Thank you.